A South African soldier deployed in Congo has shot dead a colleague and then turned the gun on himself. The South African National Defense Force, which oversees the country's armed forces, said the soldier used his official service weapon. South Africa has soldiers in Congo as part of the Southern African Development Community's mission to fight armed rebel groups in the east. It said it had convened a board of inquiry to work with the peacekeeping force in Congo to investigate the incident. As fears grow that the tensions between DRC and Rwanda might become a regional conflict, the Congolese president, Felix Shishikedi, traveled to Rwanda last week for talks with the Angolan counterpart, Jawo Lorenzo. According to the media reports, the talks focused on creating the conditions for bilateral dialogue with the Rwandan president, Paul Kagame. The conflict in the eastern DRC was the subject of a special meeting at the United Nations Security Council last month and a mini-summit on the sidelines of the African Union annual, general, annual meeting of heads of state on February 16th. Mulengwaz Hindura is the president of the Center for Political and Strategic Studies in DRC and a former spokesperson for President Joseph Kabila. He tells me that talks between the two leaders, if sincere, would reduce the tensions. Well, I think whenever there's a problem and when people start talking, that would resolve the issue. And I think that's very, very important. I think bilateral talks between uh, President uh, Chisekedi and President Kagame are very important for the region. Uh, the problem here is to want to know how serious uh, President Kagame is to continue to respect the sovereignty of Congo. He wants more from Congo than Congo can really give him. And this is where uh, there's a problem where he's... There are concerns among international diplomats uh, that uh, if this situation in Eastern Diara Congo is not resolved, it could become a regional conflict. Do you share that fear? Yes, I think the problem is uh, already, uh, you know, has got a lot of regional implications uh, because... Uh, uh, the problem with uh, President Kagame is that he's got expansionist ideas, and this is a big problem for the region. And that's where really the problem lies. The problem is not that there's any looming threat uh, for insecurity coming from another African country. To absolutely not, I think. And uh, there were there was, uh, there was some side talks at the recent AU summit, and even the UN, there were some talks about this uh, conflict in the Eastern Diara Congo. That, that call for an immediate talks between the two leaders to resolve the issue. Talking is good. Uh, talking is always good uh, in any kind of peace building or any time there's a conflict. Uh, in order to properly transform a conflict, there's got to be talks. But these talks need to be genuine. And uh, this is the, the problem is that there is nothing genuine coming from Rwanda unless you give Rwanda whatever they want. Which I don't think any sovereign country can accept anything like that. You know, talks about uh, bilateral trade would be fantastic talks, but not uh, talks about one country coming to impose its will in another country. Absolutely not. That is absolutely unacceptable. And I don't think there's any country in the region or anywhere else in the world that would accept uh, uh, that type of uh, predatory behavior. There has been accusations and counter-accusations. DR Congo accusing Rwanda of supporting M23 rebels. Rwanda accusing DR Congo of harboring rebels against them. In that situation, does that make talks difficult, or is there a way of resolving those uh, accusations? Well, there's been reports uh, from the UN. Uh, there are reports showing that Rwanda is supporting the M23, but there is no report from any independent source. Uh, showing that uh, the Congolese government is supporting anything that is a threat to, to, to Rwanda. Absolutely not. And so um, uh, this whole idea of uh, Congo supporting Rwandan rebels is a straw man and a fallacy, actually. Uh, there is no threat coming from Congo to, to Rwanda. What I would like to add is to say that uh, it is time for, for Rwanda to move on. Uh, and it's time for the Congolese government also to 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 better equip its army. Uh, the army needs to be equipped to fight. Uh, it's uh, it's uncalled for for them to be always uh, crying, crying, crying. Rwanda, Rwanda, Rwanda is violating their sovereignty. They need to have a dissuasive force. They need to do actually, they have a military that is capable of fighting, but they need to take care of them. They need to pay their salary. They need to give them an adequate salary rather than just letting them out to go on the field and fight.
and they are not well taken care of. That was Mlengwa Hindura, the president of the Center for Political and Strategic Studies in DRC and a former spokesperson for President Joseph Kabila. He spoke with me from Kansas City. Around 170 people were executed in attacks on three villages in northern Burkina Faso a week ago, a regional prosecutor said on Sunday as jihadist violence flares in the Junta World Country. On the same day, February 25th, separate attacks on a mosque in eastern Burkina Faso and a Catholic church in the north left dozens more dead. Ali Benjamin Nicolibari said he had received reports of the attacks on the villages of Komsigar, Nodin and Soloi in Yatenga province on February 25th with a provisional toll of around 170 people executed. The attacks left others wounded and caused material damage. The prosecutor for the northern town of Kori of Oahigoya added in a statement without apportioning Brem to any group. He said his office ordered an investigation and appealed to the public for information. Survivors of the attacks say there are dozens of women and young children were among the victims. Local security sources said the attacks were separate from deadly incidents that happened on the same day at a mosque in the rural community of Natyabowani and a church in the village of Esakani. Authorities have yet to release an official death toll for those attacks, but a senior church official said at the time that at least 15 civilians were killed in that attack. Burkina Faso has been grappling with a jihadist insurgency waged by rebels affiliated with Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State group that spilled over from neighboring Mali in 2015. The violence has killed among 20,000 people and displaced more than 2 million in Burkina Faso, one of the world's poorest countries situated in the Sahel, a region wracked by instability. Anger at the state's inability and the insecurity played a major role in two military group coups in 2022. Current strongman Ibrahim Trawal has made the fight against rebel groups a priority. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe.